Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is um, Roger, and um, there, are, there are many things said about my relationship with Ricardo. First thing I want to do is clarify my relationship with him. He's not my friend, he's not my associate, he's not a worker. He's my son. Ricardo lives in my home. He lived in my home before I went to prison. And he lived in my home when I came home. He picked me up from prison from the very when I was released when I came home. And he's never left my side. The night that he died, he was by my side. So this is an attack on my home. Whoever did this didn't kill an associate, didn't kill a friend. They came into my home and murdered my son. This is an attack on my home and my family. There's another important point I want to make before I continue about him. This was not an attack on Ricardo. This today is especially difficult for me. It's difficult today and the days forward to face Ricardo's friends and family because he died in my place. Make no mistake about it. Ricardo died in my place. Every single one of those bullets were meant for me. All 20 something of those bullets were meant for me. I'm standing here almost speaking to you as from the grave. And that night, only God knows how greater of a tragedy was avoided. As Ricardo's niece was in Palm Court with me, Becky was in Palm Court with me, my daughter, many other patrons was in Palm Court. Palm Court was closing. People were exiting. Two men may have jumped out of the car, but we believe there were more inside. Ricardo, there is a verse in the Bible that says, in Hebrews 9.27, it says that it is appointed for men to die once, and after this the judgment. Today, and you have to believe this, if you believe that it was his appointed time. No man can determine your death. Unless God allows it to happen. The enemies can plan all they want. I'm still standing here today, even though I wish I could replace him today. Ricardo, the outpouring of love in Ricardo's life. Ricardo was not a financially wealthy person. But you have to know who this guy is to understand why everybody is so hurt about this. Ricardo gave love. He gave love. He invested in people. He didn't. He, he, he couldn't give a big money. But if if someone I would I would call him from prison. I would say, people, it's Becky Bardet. Go to so 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 and, uh, and see if you could think some money. He said, no, 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 no matter no matter, I take care of it. He never, no matter, no matter what, no matter what, he was always there for me. He has never allowed anybody to disrespect me to his face. He's always stood for me. And so this is, today, this is going to be a difficult journey for people who, who, who know him. In this life, Ricardo gave love and he got love in return. He was the joy, he was the glue guy, he was everything to his family. I would go into his room and you would see him on the bed. His head is on Bella's lap. She picking his gray hair. One of her nie his nieces is rubbing his foot. Another one rubbing his back. Another one doing something. Surrounded by love. I always tell him you can never ever get a wife because he can't replace these girls. So this is this is this is completely and difficult for the family. He was everything, everything.
everything. He was Becky and Ricardo and I lived together. He was our mom, he was our dad, he was our, 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 our brother, he was, he was our disciplinarian. He was, he was the, the, the boss of the house. That little puppy right there, when Becky got that puppy for, for, for Christmas, I had to hide that puppy from him. Because, you know, he go wrong and said, we don't know how to take care of puppy. But after two weeks, a week, people held that puppy and loved him the way he loved us. So this is, this is not a, 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 a tragedy that is easy on the people that know him and love him. I'm getting calls from all over the world that people know us and touch us all over the world about, about his life and his legacy and all the things that surround him. There's, before, before I go, I want to, this is, this is extremely important. There, there are a lot of things that, that are being said about this. This is not an incident that we can move on from that easily. This was an attack on everyone that loves Ricardo. I want to share with you and clarify some things that happened that day. We arrived at Palm Court at 8.42. The assassins arrived at 9.42 and parked obliquely to attack the driver of the Ford, a vehicle that I drive and only I drive. They stayed there and 10.01 Ricardo left, and I presumably believe he left to bring the car around to put it in front of the concourse. That's what he always does. That's what he always does. When he approached that vehicle and put that light on, they were alerted that the driver is coming. And he was mowed down in a hail of bullets. No doubt, at least 40 rounds were fired. 25 at least hit his body. Ladies and gentlemen, that car stayed there for 20 minutes, a, f a stolen car, stolen plates, and with at least two gunmen inside high-powered caliber weapons. Shortly after they parked, a police patrol drove by, and they were not phased. They didn't leave that patrol car, stopped in front of the vehicle next to them. I'm telling you all this because of, because of evidence that are veiled in the public. They were unfazed, they waited for 20 minutes and they sh shot him at 10.01. Then they drove for 30 minutes at 10.29 they turned off the East Bank Junction. I'm gonna say that again. They drove from Palm Court for 29 minutes, for 30 minutes, from 10.01, 10.28, 28 minutes. They drove from East, from Palm Court, all the way to the most populous and busy highway in Guyana, unencumbered by a single police patrol, even though, even though, at the scene, police were there harassing witnesses in minutes. And there was one state security vehicle that arrived there in seconds. Yet, no roadblock was erected all the way to East Bank. All the way to East Bank. This, this assassination has a particular signature to it, especially in the light of the police posture over the past week. Not a single raid, not a single arrest, not a single witness, except the people who were there are being harassed. This car parked feet, yards away from the Prime Minister's residence and the President's residence. Over 40 high caliber rounds were fired, killing this boy. That car drove all the way to Suicide, yet, the police, Guyana police force, has not considered this crime a major crime investigation. 
this crime has not even reached to Eve Leary. That is a particular signature of this investigation. That car sat there under three state cameras and at least two private cameras. We heard state cameras not working. This has been turned off a long ago. There is no evidence here. The police are not following evidence in this matter. When, when that night this is it's common practice in Ghana police force to erect roadblocks when this kind of thing happens. Common practice. It did not happen that night. It didn't happen in the East Bank, it didn't happen in the East Coast. I'm going to tell you something. When the state security, that night, state security apparatus failed Ricardo. It failed him. And in the past week, the state security investigations has failed him and his family. And I'm telling you, history, history can tell us that when there is no state security, lawlessness will prevail. The hearts of men bleed for justice. It's a natural, God-given, inalienable thing that God gives man to strive for justice. And this act here, this injustice, if the police do not investigate this crime and follow the evidence rather than follow the money or, or, or any kind of corrupt motive, the hearts of men will become enraged. I'm calling on the president. I'm appealing to the president of Guyana. I see a camera we're looking for the camera. It's the president. We're asking you, I am asking you, along with, on behalf of the family and friends of Ricardo, to give this investigation the very same attention that you gave the Henry boys. Ricardo's life is no less important than any other life in Guyana. We're asking for the political will. We're asking for the, the resources that this investigation be handled by impartial, impartial investigation investigators. I have heard personally from senior police officers that said, Chief, we can't go near this one here. We can't go near this one here. Tell me why. Why we can't go near this one? All kinds of sick and demented rumors are being spread. Some even say, I'm not even going to repeat the nonsense. But Mr. President, I'm calling on the international community as well that that assassination is recorded and spread all over the world, yet not a word, not a word from anyone, including senior members of the Ghana Police Force. Not a single statement. For some reason, for some reason, I believe that this investigation has been compromised. And we're calling on the, on the authorities, the Ghana Police Force, and everyone in power to remedy this situation, to fix this injustice. And we're asking for a clean and impartial investigation into this crime. I'm sorry that I had to use my time and don't share fun memories of Ricardo, but I'm angry. I'm upset. You don't have to look any further into this case than the posture of the Ghana Police Force over the past week intimidating the family members of the wake, intimidating, harassing people at the, at the vigil. All of a sudden, they have the man
manpower and the resources to harass and intimidate the family and supporters of Ricardo, but not the resources, not the political will to investigate the matter. I know I'm taking great risk by saying these things, but I will do it for Ricardo. We will not rest. And if you're, if you're here with me, and you demand justice for Ricardo, just put a silent fist up in the air for me. And let the, let the government, let the, everybody see that we stand with Ricardo in life and death. Thank you very much for your time.